Okay, so we're almost done with McCain. Uh, and so we've talked about the inauguration a little bit. Um, let's look at the Vedic chart real quick, okay? Now I'm going to thank one of my teachers, Moses Siragar, for this information. Um, so what's happening here, um, I'll just try to summarize this. The Dasha period, the major planetary period that McCain is going through, um, is, is called uh, uh, Mercury. He's going through his Mercury period. Okay, so we would look at where Mercury is in his Vedic chart and the condition of it. Now, Vedic astrology talks a lot about do do we like the planet or not? What's its condition? Is it elevated? Is it, is it happy where it is? Basically, Mercury couldn't be happier. It's in its home sign of Virgo, with Virgo rising, meaning it's ruling the chart. So it's like so it's exalted in Virgo. It's in its rulership in Virgo, and it's the ruler of the chart, Virgo rising. And um, it, it, so it brings a lot of power to this person. Um, and so it's in its own sign, we mentioned that, uh, ruling the first and tenth house, the tenth house is career. The first house is how we're perceived in the world. And, um, and it has directional strength. It loves being where it is, basically. Um, and it, it doesn't have any problematic planets hitting it. Um, so it, it seems hard to blow something like that, <laughs> that basically. But he, if he doesn't get elected, what Moses says is that this is, he's not going away. He's going to be very popular in some way. He's going to have a role. He'll probably do a lot of writing or speaking, Mercury, right? Um, so, uh, or hosting some show or something like that. Um, and on Fox News. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of the next couple of years, um, the South Node. We mentioned that coming onto the Mars. Talk about that for this Mars. Um, it also crosses McCain's Pluto in the 10th house. And 10th house is the house of career. Pluto is about power. And this could definitely, again, hearken to someone coming to power who was in power before, it coming full circle. Um, and, and in 2010, um, the planet Jupiter which again always expands and gives opportunity to whatever it touches. I think it's very important in, um, in this kind of work where we're looking at uh, powerful people's charts. We want to look at Saturn and Jupiter a lot. So when you put um, in 2010 Jupiter onto McCain's natal Saturn, it says, okay, every, all that hard work and everything that your soul came to do with that, that Saturn energy Jupiter is giving a kind of beneficial energy to expanding that. Jupiter and Saturn coming together, it um, it can feel it can be really it can really help that Saturn manifest and give opportunity. So in 2010, he's having that happen. I think that's very important. Um, the last thing is that in the relocation chart, um, because of where he was born, some of the longitude lines in, in Panama, some of the longitude lines. Are similar, and um, so uh, in his birth chart, McCain's birth chart, it has a similarity to his relocation positions in Washington D.C. But basically, Pluto is pretty close to the midheaven. It doesn't get more powerful than that because you see this a lot in um, in CEOs' charts, in you know corporate heads, in people who have a lot of influence in the world. The midheaven is our career. Pluto brings that extra intensity and power to it. He also has the moon close to the IC, the root or the home in the chart, the fourth house. It feels really comfortable. Now he's been living there, but it feels really, you know, he's there on and off. But it feels really comfortable being where the moon is on the IC because the moon rules that area of the zodiac. So it says we'll feel very at home, we'll have a lot of connections, we'll have this network, we'll be 
It'll just feel good. I think that, that looks very good. Um, and the interesting thing is that in the geodetic chart, which is another map, basically, that we use when we're studying relocation, the um, planet Uranus is on the ascendant here for John McCain. It's within a few degrees. It's not right on top. But Uranus is, again, revolutionary change, radical. You don't know what's coming. Uranus could be called the maverick. Okay? Someone that does something their own way. And in Washington, D.C., he's known as the Maverick. Uranus on the Ascendant, his mask, how he's appearing, has this Uranian quality. And that's the interesting thing when we cycle back to the Saturn-Uranus opposition, is that within his own party, John McCain is the Uranian force, the Maverick force, which gives him I think extra potency in this Saturn Uranus opposition because he's perceived as the Uranian force in his own party. Hence why he would go into this seemingly crazy Uranian space and choose Sarah Palin, Palin for a, a vice president. That's a very Uranian maverick move right there. Seemingly, whoever, who knows where it came from. But the point is, it, it shows that I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it my way, I'm gonna do it what nobody expects. That's the Uranian quality. And so that even gives, when we look at the coming years, if he is there, we don't know what's coming. You know? And people in office don't know what's coming. In fact, he doesn't, if you watch him, know at all what's coming because he has no consistency with anything. If you list, very much listen to him, and if you, you can look at a video on YouTube that was created that basically spliced together his opinions of the war in Iraq that went from him very much backing it, it, full support, and then a little bit of time later say, well, you, you know, we might have to be there forever, basically, and be in a war for the next hundred years, to then say the war was a mistake. We shouldn't have been there to be with. I mean, this is Uranian inconsistency, okay? That, that's one of the, the factors there. So this is uh, this is the picture of um, of McCain. So um, now, uh, when when we look at Obama, okay, we're going to do kind of the same same picture here. Does anyone have a question so far? I know there's a lot of information, but it's okay. I'm going to record it. You can come back and listen to it. <laughs> um, okay. Can you check the time on that video? And um, there's an extra tape. So